So, what is a capacitor? Simply put, a capacitor is a device that stores energy in the form of an electric field. It consists of two conductive plates called electrodes, separated by an insulating material called a dielectric. Examples of this material include ceramic, glass, and air. When a voltage is applied across the plates, electric charges of opposite polarities build up on the plates, creating an electric field between them. This electric field is what stores the energy. All capacitors have a property known as capacitance, and it is defined as the ratio of charge on either plate of the capacitor to the voltage between the plates. Capacitance is measured in units called farads, and typical capacitance values are in the range of micro to picofarads. Here is how capacitors work. When a capacitor is connected to a power source, the power source then drives a current through the circuit by pushing electrons from the negative terminal of the battery. When these electrons reach plate P, they cannot cross the gap between the plates so they accumulate on P. This generates an electric field which repels electrons from plate Q, causing them to flow back to the battery via the positive terminal. This migration of electrons causes a positive charge to build up on Q. As the charges accumulate, they create an electric field which opposes that of the power source, thus opposes the current flow in the circuit. Because of this opposition, the current in the circuit decreases as the electric field between the plates grows. You can think of it this way. As more electrons accumulate on P, this negative charge starts to repel the electrons being pushed towards it by the power source, thus fewer electrons flow towards P, meaning there is a decrease in current. Similarly, as positive charge accumulates on Q, it attracts electrons and inhibit them from traveling to the positive battery terminal, thus reducing current as well. As the capacitor continues to charge up, the electric field between its plates grows, the voltage across it increases, and the current flowing in the circuit decreases. Under ideal conditions, the increase in voltage and decrease in current are exponential. When the capacitor is fully charged, the voltage across it is equal to the voltage of the power supply and current through the circuit is virtually zero. The energy stored in a capacitor can be calculated using any one of these equations. To discharge a capacitor, you can connect it across a load, such as a resistor, in which case the capacitor behaves as a power source. As the capacitor discharges, its voltage exponentially decreases to zero, and thus the current through the resistor also exponentially decreases to zero, according to Ohm's law. From the equations for charging and discharging a capacitor, you can notice a common expression, which is the product of capacitance C and resistance R. This product is known as the time constant of a capacitor and is defined as the time it takes for a capacitor to charge up to 63.2% of the supply voltage. After one time constant, a capacitor will have charged up to 63.2% of the battery voltage. After two time constants, it will have charged up another 63.2% of the difference between the supply voltage and the capacitor voltage at one time constant. After five time constants, the capacitor is considered fully charged. So, increasing either the resistance in the circuit or the capacitance of the capacitor increases the time constant, meaning the capacitor takes longer to charge and discharge. On the other hand, removing the resistance altogether means that the capacitor will charge and discharge almost instantaneously. Although capacitance is defined in terms of charge and voltage, it is independent of the two quantities and only depends on the geometry of the capacitor in question. For a parallel plate capacitor, the capacitance is directly proportional to the area of overlap between the plates and inversely proportional to the distance between them. Thus, increasing the area or reducing the separation of the plates increases capacitance. Dielectric material also affects capacitance. Let us take air, for example. Air molecules get ionized when they are subjected to an electric field of roughly 3 million volts per meter. This causes air to become conducting and causes a spark to occur. So when air is used as a dielectric, the electric field that builds up between the plates 
must not exceed 3 million volts per meter because at this point, a spark will occur between the plates, discharging them in the process. If you use another material such as glass, its molecules get polarized by the electric field, thus creating some induced charges of the opposite polarity on each plate glass interface. This reduces the overall electric field strength between the plates, thus preventing a spark from occurring. This now means the capacitor can hold more charge per given voltage, thus its capacitance is considered to have been increased. The quantity used to evaluate the effect of a dielectric is called the relative permittivity, which is how well a material resists permeation of an electric field. This is measured relative to that of a vacuum. And for glass, the relative permittivity is 5, meaning glass reduces the effective electric field between the plates by 5 times from the one produced in a vacuum. So, a capacitor with a glass dielectric has 5 times the capacitance of that with air in between, provided that all other dimensions are similar. The symbol for a capacitor in electric circuits is this. When several capacitors are connected in series, the overall capacitance is related to all the individual capacitances by this equation. When the capacitors are connected in parallel, the effective capacitance is the sum of all the individual capacitances in the network. Capacitors can work under direct current or alternating current conditions. Although the operating principles are still the same in both cases, capacitors exhibit some special properties when connected to AC, and we will discuss these in a separate video. In reality, there are different types of capacitors, such as electrolytic capacitors and ceramic capacitors, but they all use the same principles. Capacitors are essential in the construction of electrical and electronic systems, such as voltage regulators, rectifiers, audio equipment, filters, oscillators, and amplifiers. That's it for how capacitors work. Thank you for watching.